Hey folks, Whip here, and welcome to my hardcore Minecraft world where I have survived 3,235 days. Today, I want to do a world tour as I just uploaded episode 30 over on my main channel, which comes with a world download for everybody who's a Patreon supporter and YouTube member. Join the Discord, you can find info on how to get that if you would like to. But anyways, here we are in front of the starter house with Oliver the kitty cat and a recently organized storage room. Look at this, the shulker monster is gone. It's amazing. Yes, yes, yes. 3,200 something days into the world, this is my storage room. It's not the best, but it works because I just keep placing the blocks I get back down. Just don't look at how unorganized it actually is in here. Moving on from the starter house and when we have our enchanting tower up in there with the full enchanting setup, I first and foremost wanted to get a mining setup ready to go, which comes down to this building right here with a jelly cat guarding the front to keep creepers away. And we actually have two of them. This mine cart will take us all the way down and we'll come back up and look at that in a moment. This guy stops at multiple different layers like right here. If I press the button and hold W, it'll take me down to the next, but this is optimal mining here for copper i believe and anything i get i can just throw inside of here and it goes up and through shooting through this thing and out where that leads into all of these chests in here with a few leftover goodies that i just haven't taken out and then blast furnaces that actually have a good amount of coal in them wait that's where i smelted a lot of my stuff originally now naturally after building a mine and a starter house i decided you know what it's episode three I ended hardcore season two while dying and trying to build a castle. So let's tackle that right away with a giant castle right over here, spanning across the entire valley that I just love so very much. I mostly wanted the bridge and I was like, what's gonna work with the bridge? So we have to build a castle. Over here, there's some graves for my friends who have died in their own hardcore Minecraft worlds. It just kind of keeps going. I'm collecting them like little trophies of people I've outlasted. But inside of here is where I keep the world map. I do wanna move it soon to a big hallway underground, but the most recent is episode 25 I probably need to get a new one as we've done a lot of work since then now not only over here do we have the castle but there's a little hole in the ground right here the grand entrance out out into my dwarven villager trading hall in a cave I've got my nether wart farm right over there we've got water in the base as the easy way to spawn proof things and this is a railroad track that leads to multiple geodes there's one back here there's one here and then there's two more hidden inside the ground there that I was able to find so we've got like a conveyor belt gathering those and bringing them back into the middle and then all of these buildings pretty much have a purpose you can hear the villagers as instead of here is a fish tank for all of our farmer villagers to hang out okay i lied not everything has a purpose sometimes they house gravel but right over here very very far into the series i decided to build a super smelter so we've got one of these designs back in here honestly not too sure which episode i built it on but it has been amazing it's a 64 furnace super smelter and just everything comes in here so so quick i really need to decorate the entrance to it so maybe i'll do that as like a mini project soon but coming out the front of there this building has all of the clerics on the inside in here we have the villager breeder that is uh, very ugly then inside of this building i've got all the stone masons where i buy a bunch of stuff i actually want to really expand that soon and get even more of them the base down here we've got farmers in there for golden carrots if i need them don't really eat them anymore because we use pork chops since they're free but the most important one is right in here we have all of the librarians and cartographers surrounding the outside so buying glass from librarians converting into glass panes that into emeralds that was my main way of getting emeralds for a very honestly it still is actually that's kind of just realizing now I still use that to get emeralds and I've had that since like day 100. up here all the way at the tippy top behind this giant door we've got a big old anvil and an unfinished area for a bunch of tool smiths I've just haven't really needed to get more tools so I haven't finished that one off quite yet but this whole place was a really fun project to do over a few different episodes out as I need more villagers I run down there and do some stuff and just kind of get them working we're gonna be flying by a few things as we go as I really want to kind of give you the idea of how I progressed in this world so early on I decided over here we have a little stables with a donkey horse and mule and then nope they're all in there I needed another mule but over here we have a big old blacksmithing forge that I use for all of my netherite stuff where we have some extras in here and just some rare diamond ore sitting out in front because why not over here is where I had all of my animals to begin with this was my sheep this was my pigs and then or reverse those I think and out here were cows and then I realized sheep can't regrow their wool if they're standing on coarse dirt so I moved them out very quickly honestly I think these trees back here have been here for nearly 2,500 days because this is where I was originally chopping trees down and I moved it very far away as I kind of progressed and was able to move around more easily 
out here we have a little doghouse for two pups sky and geo and you know giga tree we'll get to that one here soon one thing i've tried to do in this world is plant a new field of farmland and everything every single episode as i just love how it looks so you can see that really sprawling around here everywhere coming down into the valley though right over here we have a moss farm and bone meal farm which gets all the good stuff that we need there moving into some auto villager farms you can see the villager very very busy he's definitely villager like number 20 because mobs kept getting in and killing them but here we have our potatoes then over on this side we have our carrots it's really cool little hamlet of sorts where those all go and I can run in here there's another villager in the box and there's a hopper minecart that pulls all that down here and we just have all of those that we need very helpful when I constantly plant new fields over here we got a big old flower field and just kind of you know fields as we work our way down into the valley I added a little vineyard here to break away from all the other types of fields so that it could be right next to a greenhouse which has a lot of beautiful stuff you might have heard them back here we have bees that have been very very busy getting so much honeycomb I think it's actually run out of shears yep definitely has until I start actually using that much honeycomb I'm just gonna leave it over here I recently added a second greenhouse that I can use for bee breeding so I can get a bunch of them and move them around as I need to I should probably breed them there's only three left the sheep that I mentioned at rehome they all came down here where we have a large area for a bulk sheep storage I guess you could say uh a sheep pen pasture if we need a lot of one type of color I just dye all these guys and manually harvest otherwise if I'm working in the area we have one of each type of sheep in here for every single color so they are all automatically getting sheared and we just got a bunch of that stuff down here ready to go over this way between even more fields that are absolutely gorgeous I decided to turn this lake not only into a place for all of my turtles to hang out if I need scoot for anything to make any turtle helmets but also a little fishing shack so if I ever every once in a while like to record the little fishing with whip videos this is where it all started and was the reason for it I've decided to kind of do those throughout the world but new projects so we can have new backgrounds but it's kind of fun to still be able to go back there and look at that giant fish which uh definitely could have existed not at all in that lake this here is a project I did a lot more recently where I was just trying to fill in all of the spaces around here and it was just a big wide open spot that I was like you know what a field in here doesn't make sense I need more people living out here instead of just farmland everywhere so I added a few houses in just kind of up and throughout the hills a little storage barn and I just really love how it's turned out and they have a little access down into this pond which originally I'd kind of envisioned as once the it would flood or something they'd be able to get out over into here but it doesn't really make sense so I got to rethink on that one soon but along with that we've got another little, little farmstead right up in here which is very cool a very cool custom tree with candles as like colored blossoms at the top which I love and a bunch of this is the first place where I started using some of the nether foliage in the overworld and I really like how it's turned out but here we have a little grain silo which could be lifting hay grain up and storing it on the inside which you can also get access to in here that definitely needs a floor we've got a little farmhouse over there and then this one I actually did decorate with a nice little place to stop in a bed if I need to come by and sleep a night away of course we have the beautiful birch tree with a little workstation behind and moss on log right there the original if you get the joke you get the joke it's a cool I don't know it's a thing before we touch up on this village right here I want to come over to world spawn I built my starter house at the top up there but all the way over here is actually where I spawned into the world at these four torches is literally where I started right here and we started by going down in there got our first coal right over in that cave and ran off that way before I realized oh wait I could just walk around here that's fine there's a cactus farm at spawn that does absolutely nothing there's also an LA here because I had an extra one uh that doesn't work because it's not loaded in so it's ugly and I need to remove it but up in here what does work because it's spawn chunks build is we have the iron farm it's absolutely amazing for single player stuff it's more than I could ever need look at all those blocks I'm never gonna go through all of this <laughs> I could really turn the farm off and save some lag but it's fine this is where I first started telling stories in the world with like a mystical something powered by the amethyst that is holding on to the essence of what the buildings used to look like so I tried taking all of the glass up here and mimicking the shape of like a tower over there and another tower on the front as if this was like a mini fortress and I kind of want to do more of that throughout the world it's also is holding the giant giga tree together and everything like that a quick little stop up here there's a giant pit in the ground which this is one of my favorite things I have ever made it was an absolute headache to begin with but we have an auto wheat farm that is powered by villagers picking up the crops and then because they can't get to the composter the wheat stays on the ground 
which means the LA's you're seeing running around, they pick it up and throw it over here as he, he's just chucking it. It's completely overflowing. I really need to expand the storage because it's full all the way up to there. But the LA's pick it up and drop it off at the note blocks to return the wheat and slowly it just stacks up. Now up at the top of the hill here, we have a storage room. This is a giant lumber mill that I built and I absolutely love it. So we have all the different types of logs in here. It was an auto sorting system. So you can see all the hoppers behind it, but for some reason it doesn't work and I can't figure out why so now i come in here and just manually sort it all there was supposed to be excess overflow coming in over here and ending in there and then i'd move them into the barrels for the different types i just do it manually but it's fine i still love the build it looks really nice so over here we have like a sawing section so the logs can come on their cart down here get right here into the saw and then go inside the mill for storage i've got a little system there where the saw is actually powered by all these turning mechanisms that connect over here to a water wheel that i kind of love inspired by the dwarves down in the cave they have a lot of water wheels and so i rebuilt one of those designs up here to kind of show that the dwarves and then the people living on top are kind of working together one thing i actually missed at my starter house right here where we started the tour was we have this little chopped area to show that like the lumberjacks are out here working and then these are trees that they manually planted to grow and there's a pillager that i've been trying to break his crossbow just like that i just run by every once in a while one day it'll break but inside of here we have a sugarcane farm that desperately needs an interior fixed up for it but this thing has powered my paper needs to get rockets since we're over here and the tour is going to take us away for the next little while let's take a quick look at the quarry I wanted to build another storage room as you saw the one over there was dedicated to logs and wood goods and everything like that i decided to build a storage room dedicated to stones so down here we have the quarry that's very blocky and looks very man-made you could say so there's a lot of tools and machinery down here different layers there's a back entrance into the city that doesn't exist on that side quite yet and i really want to make it super geometric with large boulders and stones as you're walking around that really looks like people have been carving this area out instead of something more natural but the most important part probably is inside of here we have stone stone brick we have the cobbles deep slates nether goods go back there tough and dripstone yeah dripstone in there we got andesite diorite and then we got bricks and granite right over in there so i can just come in here unload shulkers and everything i need as you can see we've got plenty of stone all oh yeah look at all those shulkers eventually this area behind the gatehouse will be a massive sprawling city that currently exists up there and the elephant in the room the tiny tree at the top of the mountain this big old boy this is something that i've wanted to do for a long time building a world tree in minecraft this is stage one i'm not 100 happy with it i think the leaves from there could come out probably twice the distance just to make the canopy feel super full so that's a project i want to do in the future my goal is to make that happen before the end of the year if we survive that long i really hope we do i really hope we do but i really want to expand that and get working on it but before we touch base on everything over there let's send our way down here into the town we're going to see new stuff as we enter in i decided to build a little like painter station here as if they're painting the scenery because i just love it so much there's somebody right here da -da 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 -da, fan art opportunity right there and then they've got a little pumpkin patch which is the first one i ever planted big old wheat field and they've got their little station over here we've got another farmhouse over here that i like to throw these in just throughout the world in different spaces apparently he only has chairs and a crafting table instead of a bed but that's fine but i like to just plop these in throughout the world in any open space between the fields because i think it really helps fill it in or even these natural places in here so it's not just fields absolutely everywhere over here we've got a bunch of trees right along the river edge using andesite walls and oak leaves that i love and you can see i've been doing a lot of work recently detailing around the edge of the river down here just to kind of polish this section off and really just check all the boxes that i can and i'm loving it so very much but coming forward over into here we've got the town which was the first really big project I think I did outside of the castle is where I built and transformed this town in a single episode I think it was episode 10 on the series and this is the first kind of like viral video I had from it which was very very fun so in the middle we have market stalls we've got a painter we've got a candle maker we've got somebody who sells little like iron tools and things and little gadgets that you can buy over here we've got a flower stand we have the army of cats when I was trying to get all the advancements we've got a cake stand and back to the candles this is meant to be like a sail makers workshop i never did the interior because i like world building too much so i did an outdoor workstation for them off the back over here we have a big old inn with a connected like kitchen cooking area and then a walkway across because i really wanted to block your line of sight as you're coming through here because i knew i wanted to do a tree up there eventually so i wanted to have like this 
view when you're all the way back here you can see the top of it you're like oh my gosh I gotta go that way block the line of sight you're like wait I gotta travel forward but wait there's other things to look at a little cart there's like a wagon here there's another house there's the other trees and then you're coming around the corner you're like oh my gosh what is that but this in here is meant to be a stables for horses and whatnot so if we need to throw anything in here they are ready to go and up above would also be more rooms for the inn and everything in there that we could need but coming back over to where we're at with the river we've got a big old covered wagon here that I absolutely love it's got a bed if I need to sleep and just some barrels and crafting tables if I need to drop some stuff or make some real quick which leads to kind of a new region in this world through this gatehouse we've got a big old drawbridge that can get you across the river which I really really enjoy so that brings you from there transitioning into this new zone that is well a giant custom birch forest that I love so very much when they're talking about updating birch forest potentially in the wild update I was like you know what I'm gonna do that because I really love birch trees and yes this is Gemini Tay approved I had her on here she confirmed this is worth it <laughs> down here this is the first build I ever did with packed mud so we've got a little forester's hut and they've got a little house on the inside that I love so very much and it's just kind of something in here very earthy and just stuff growing all over the place I had released a bunch of frogs into the swamp here but I think they all died somehow or they just swam on their merry way out but that's fine flying up into the sky here you can see the birch forest is pretty large I think there's like 80 or 90 custom trees built into the section and then there's also all of the smaller trees and everything like that so walking around in the forest you just get fully immersed with all of these different things going on and I love it so very much in here we have a hunter's lodge with two doggos out with they have little like doggo like kennels of sorts that they can go into as they need inside of here was going to be a little lodge space for a lot of people to stay over if they were hunting in the forest then we've got a little workshop for them exiting out through this way transitioning into another project which is much more recent for me of transforming and building an entire custom biome that way we'll wander off soon to the latest project but here we've got our beetroot field we've got a little sunflower field over there and there's a bunch of horses and llamas and things in here the llamas I put there the horse I don't remember but my favorite place to view the custom biome from is right over here look at this gorgeous thing I built the giant rock and a monolith on top with that with the beacon beam coming out because that's where my gas farm output was originally for all my gunpowder which we'll touch on in the nether soon but it was really ugly and just floating so I decided to disguise it in the rock and then built this cool thing on top of it as kind of like a old monolithic structure that adds a story to the world that I don't have to tell I just could build this giant thing and it fits in eventually I want to transform the top of this hill into more mountainy structures but that is something coming way down the way as I've got tons of projects in here the custom biome I absolutely love so very much we've got little streams coming down all the way into the main river we've got custom stuff throughout here I tried making a plains biome so leaving it really open instead of just filling it all with trees but then also the birch forest I didn't want the harsh edge so I tried extending the birch trees out a little bit as if it's like a forest edge biome kind of over there and we've got big old rocks and things along the river edge which is so nice but you can see I just picked up regeneration and absorption so anytime we're near the monolith we do get a nice little buff in the world to keep me a little safer as this is hardcore I know we build a lot but it is a hardcore world now all of these moss carpets are placed down here as this building right here is my raid farm all the fancy schmancy totems that I definitely never pop in this world uh they all come from here so I believe down in that little pit yeah there he is there's the Mr villager ready to go I can pick up bad omen from all the pillagers up at the top of the hill run down here raid activates and I hide underground and then all of them come in here and we can just get the totems it's fantastic at the top of the monolith there is an entrance to the inside that I did say was for the gas farms you can come in here drop on down and all the storage for my gunpowder and gas tears and everything is right there and the output for the farm comes through that way I'll finish off that room into a little cavern eventually but for now I've had other projects I want to focus on these take a lot of time so unfortunately a little bit of the finer details you don't really see all that much like the behind the scenes things I just kind of do on my own when I have time but over here is one of my literally is the most recent project this is episode 30 building this entire village and building all of these tulip fields and everything like that episode 29 came out a little bit before where we transformed the entire biome built all of these river networks and everything like that the bridges and got flower farms transforming the entire flower forest biome that was this hill is now massive tulip field so we have all the different types of tulips we have white which gives light gray dye we have pink orange and red in here ready to go they're all auto farms back in there and then behind it there's another allium and azure bluette farm in there 
over here i recently built up a little shepherd section so we've got our villager shepherd out here doing his thing how did you get you're a toolsmith how did you get over here how did you guys get in here how are all of you in here i am speechless i was wondering where all the villagers from the city went that i built a nice village for them apparently they've all just come over here to live inside this space okay all right yep they all are gonna live in here now okay well behind them which i built this here so that one it could run while i was working on the village project but it's a nether tree farm which is fantastic i don't like automating the grind out of minecraft because it's really fun for me but we can get all of the nether goodies and i hate gathering nether nether trees so i just never really use crimson or warp stuff in builds so i figured an auto farm would mean that i actually use the blocks which i'm very happy i made the decision to do that i have kind of rules i've set for my myself where I'm never going to build a general tree farm. I'm never going to build a cobblestone generator or any of those things that produce those really easy to get that just take a little time blocks in the world. I really want to keep that as a way to continue grinding and playing the game on all aspects. I'm not a huge technical player, so that type of stuff is more grind, just get it done and move on. So it's not super important for me but what is important is creating environments that i feel like are really livable so these villagers haven't went to the shepherd's house quite yet and they all really enjoy themselves over here we're really having so much fun at the stonemason's house yeah it's absolutely it's an absolute blast we're just hopping all over the we really love it here oh bedtime I hooked this is a bell tower there's bells hidden underground that chime every single night to go to bed still a little early we've got little market stalls throughout here that are divided up to all the different workstations so they're just kind of doing their own thing like we've got a fletcher we've got a weaponsmith we've got a shepherd over here and then this building inside of here they all kind of right now just have beds and workstations for them which i think unfortunately the villagers that worked in here now live with the shepherd out this side of the village which goes over to all the flower farms we have the inn kind of leading across here i really love this style where an inn just kind of goes over a street stables are attached to it and it's all kind of one structure so you'll see that a lot throughout my worlds just because i love the design and i do it in different ways each time but it is a thing over here we've got a toolsmith villager house this is a butcher villager house which uh I did put a smoker in good 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 right here you can see the librarian because he has his house right there this is a big spot for the water mill out in front that I love so very much and it has a lot of job blocks which might be why the villagers are going over there because they're seeing this and they're like I can't get to it let's go say hi to our friend but I really love the water wheel sitting here on the river I think it's absolutely amazing I tried adding in a lot of little cypress trees and things inside of here so we're back at the stonemason over here is a leather worker where they have a little workstation out back for two cauldrons so two leather workers are you a leather worker you're a toolsmith okay never mind then we've got a few row houses in here just for general villagers for farmers mostly and then the chapel the chapel of the world tree which this is i'm saying because the world tree you can't see it quite it's over that way but it's made of an acacia log so i used an acacia sapling and then the top is azalea leaves so i put a flowering azalea bush on top and i just love it i try really hard to not draw too much inspiration for many like real world things unless it's just like general architecture styles and one of those things is as far as like religions and whatnot go i just try and keep it to my own little weird minecrafty thing so we have the world tree religion of sorts in here that it has its own weird circular structure that really just kind of looks like a garden <laughs> but coming out this way you can see where we have all of the orange tulips a bridge leading over here to where all the red tulips are and a small apiary in the middle of the fields where these bees love fence he loves he loves fence really really loves tree uh they go into the fields occasionally and get all the stuff that they need and it's fine before we jump back over to the base and check all that stuff out over here when the wild update release and we got access to mud the first thing i was like i could build a castle out of that so i decided to build the mud brick castle which is probably half made out of mud at this point it might actually be less than half because there's brown mushroom blocks there's dripstone there's bricks there's jungle and jungle planks there's other non mud things wow look at all the lack of mud in here <laughs> i actually think that tower is mostly mushroom block 
but it's my mud castle i swear i'm not like those people that build an entire dirt mansion where there's three blocks of dirt in it and call it a dirt mansion i swear but this is something i really enjoyed and slowly my plan is to grow the world out from where i'm at now which is why i keep doing projects and building off of here so there's a road that does connect all the way back through there over to the castle you can see right in there and eventually i want to fill this all with fields and farmhouses and just more stuff like the villages as we move our way through definitely here in spawn we'll be adding some more but that'll come soon as for now there is a massive project that i have been working on slowly and steadily throughout this entire time that i'm really excited to keep working on in kind of the next chapter of this world the massive grand city and the entrance here you can see we have a few windmills as ways of processing all the crops and grains and everything that come out of the valley here there's a little mountain spring that comes down along the edge flowing through it all and eventually ends up in that pond and I am really, really happy with how this turned out. I even went through and decorated the interiors. So they they're all unique on the inside, but they have the little milling stations in here and different ways to get all the way up to the top so you can kind of check things out where there's like a really rough system for putting it all together over here. But I, I think it works. I think it's OK. It's Minecraft after all. The stuff isn't meant to move unless I install the create mod, huh? Maybe. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. It's vanilla. It's vanilla. I won't do it. I promise maybe outside of the city I want to have a place for travelers to rest so we have a small inn here with a stables attached for their horses to hang out they'd be a little bit cheaper than going inside of the city walls which has been a fantastic project inside of itself in here in the grand front entrance we have a way up there we've got the way to the mansion in the middle that's used as a town hall and then another way off here where we've got a little workstation kind of market stall of sorts I'm trying to add a lot of colors so you see the purple in there inside of here we have a stall with every single type of rideable animal except the strider hanging out on the inside which is actually really really fun to collect all of them working our way up around the corner I really like playing with heights there's a lot of staircases and little tiny shrines like this just hidden throughout the place but over here we've got an interior for a blacksmith of sorts where there's two smiths so one station here and another there just to make it a little bit more unique than you'd see so we have two people working in here this one is a bakery that I haven't done the interior for yet but we'll get to that soon here's the back side with a little back alley behind our stables we've got a little workstation there this is going to be a carpenter of sorts inside of there eventually I just haven't gotten to it quite yet but down here we have the wagon builder who's just doing a lot of cool stuff in here which I really like building wagons we got the storage supplies and we've got the little working stations around there this is kind of a main road leading throughout so it's going to lead down the hill there and I'll remove the old village house because yeah I just kind of buried a village and built on top of it but that's that's okay as right in here we have the grocery store I love it it's so fun I tried my very best job at building trader flips and I, I think I succeeded I think I got it down in here though you can hear all the pistons firing because there's an auto pumpkin and melon farm on both sides for super stonks Ooh, dirt taking a tip from good times the scar I used a bunch of coral here for flowers and we'll check out the mansion here in a moment it has full interiors and I absolutely love it but over here we have the tailoring shop which has I've done first floor interiors as like show sets and things like that of places you'd actually see when you're walking on the street because you won't see up here so I didn't bother building it to save time but here we've got a little tailor section they have their like try on room and design room and then they have their actual like working room back in there here we have a wagon storage building with a few stalls out in front of it and right across the street from that we've got the tavern which has like an artist wall in here and then on this side we just have a bunch of just seats for people to come into the tavern travelers to grab some food or even locals and then we've got a kitchen area back in here which i absolutely love and that leads into an outdoor herb garden along the back street with a little well of sorts where they can get fresh water and we've got a few herbs growing back in here this side this is going to be a library i think in the end and then this is a guild hall which is going to be really cool to design the interior of and just kind of make something different i'm trying to give the buildings all their own purpose and unique thing instead of just saying here i have 50 village houses i want to actually have them have like a reason to exist but that brings us back down the street into here where we have this big old boy this was an absurd project building it itself building the entire mansion and then also decorating the entire inside I just went over the top of it and I love it so very much so we have grand hall in here over to this way because it's a quick one we've got a little office space we've got like a meeting room of sorts or another office that somebody could work in and then back here we have another meeting the idea is I took the mansion and transformed it into 
a town hall the upstairs is still bedrooms and stuff but the first floor is all about like productivity and meeting space and like here we have a dining room if they need to host a dinner or something like that around the corner this is how you get up to the second floor then back here we've got a little storage closet and then also leading into the kitchen right back over in this section which i really like have a lot of like foliage in the kitchen and a high ceiling for a long skinny space i feel like works really well coming upstairs along all of the mud though we can get into a very cool section here that i absolutely love you can see down into the first floor we've got a lot of decoration in here and it look it looks really good i used a lot of skulk blocks just for fun over here we have a few bedrooms transitioning the color theme so you really know you're in a different position here we have like the kids room so we have four beds in here right across the way uh this was my 1000th video when i recorded it and uploaded it so i dedicated a room to the number 1000 uh moving on over here we have a whole set of netherite armor diamond armor gold armor and i never filled in the extra beacon but netherite swords wow look at that fancy the last thing on this upper floor is my bedroom area or the grand bedroom so we've got that we've got a little bit of a storage section here inside of the closet small enchanting setup that definitely doesn't work and then a personal office space here in the back just to kind of fill in this section this world is massive and i might have to start breaking these world tours into two parts because wow this is a long video at this point in time but coming out into the back section we have the gardens for the mansion and i absolutely love them let's start from the bottom which actually has a little room that we missed here is the grand entry hall again to situate yourself then you come over here and you can go up through this section which is like interior garden land coming out to real garden land that is so very fun so we've got some pools in here a little inspired by what you might find in like an italian garden is like a, a very fancy one was my idea again carving little shrines to the side having some small decorative trees and really finely done grass lawns i thought was a good way to go up here we have even larger fountains with more decorative trees and flowers and this is where we exited from the second floor where there's a small seating area to drink some wine in the vineyard in the gardens and have a very fancy posh day and all that stuff i don't know what they do over here i built a small version of the world tree trying to make it look like like it's a smaller one because it's such a luxurious place they've actually been able to cultivate one of the saplings into a tree like the village that we were at a few minutes ago down across the river through the birch forest along the yellow brick road well of course dirt road but you get what I'm saying they haven't quite figured out how to cultivate it into an actual tree up here is the final section of the garden I started using moss and tall grass inside these trees which I really love but here we just have a really cool little something little something decorative piece in the garden because I didn't want to just plant more flowers and I really wanted something to hang glowberries from so I guess it's a trellis kind of I don't know that is pretty much everything we built in this section of the world yeah yeah I know that's not even it <laughs> back over at the starter base section there is a little pathway down here into a cavern that will take you down this very very nice ominous tunnel of soul lanterns into the nether with a foggy glass floor that I love so very much it goes all the way down to like the full fog effect and I tried lighting it at different layers with glow lichen so it kind of was not just a flat matte color but it actually has some depth to it but inside here we come into the nether with a very grand exiting nether portal right there that yep it's so beautiful as we are on the nether roof I have my nether hub built here going in all of the different directions over there we have hogland farm here we have giant ghast farm around the entire middle section we have little piglin bartering stations so there's two piglins in there give them some gold they fill up the chest down below I cleared out all of this bedrock by hand with the TNT breaking method to be able to fly in and out from there. Yeah, that was like a five hour task. Would not recommend. But over here, you can see a massive gold farm. That thing is absurd. If I run it for like 30 minutes, it fills up almost 40 double chests of stuff. So it's it's very good. It's very, very nice. I don't have to AFK there that much, if ever over here we have ourselves a magma cube farm no this is the frog light farm and then here we have the magma cream farm which both needed to go in a basalt delta so they're all the way down here as the closest one but you can see all the frog lights and the occasional magma cubes and then that is purely magma cubes i got really lucky on my nether hub where things were in every single one of the directions which is fantastic so crimson forest hogland farm Soul Sand Valley gas farm, basalt delta all the way down there for the magma cube things, and regular nether waste on that side for that lovely old thing. Now, on top of that, we can dive down here into the nether where I've done even more stuff. Of I built an entire perimeter 
in the nether well i destroyed an entire perimeter to build a wither skeleton farm except i do need to take that back one or two more blocks because it still works but they come in here i can either have the dogs kill them or i can drop the doggos down and do it myself that has been an absolutely fantastic way to supply bones and coal for this world as the bone meal farm i have doesn't work all that well now if we follow this row of torches where i do eventually want to expand the nether hub to kind of encompass these areas and build some really cool art up into the sky there. I think it'd be super fun. Through this portal though, leads to the overworld again, where we have an entire drained ocean monument that I really wanna come back in here soon and completely decorate this into something Atlantis city styled. Tear down the monument, build a big obelisk into the sky, towers on top of all of those, bridges and things interconnecting all over the place. If you saw Lizzie's base in Empire Season 1, I kind of want to do that, but bigger and grander, and I think it's going to be very cool. So that's something we will tackle soon, as I drain the whole thing and I haven't built anything at it yet, so I, I kind of I gotta do that one, you know? Hopping back into the nether to fly to the next portal. I still don't know where that one goes. I never use it anymore. It must have been for something, but we want to go to this guy. That leads into my massive stronghold transformation where I put six torches down on the ground. Uh, and we can walk forwards into here, which I would love to transform this soon, into the end, where we have the Giga Tree. I destroyed all the obsidian pillars, took those down, removed the bedrock at the top points, and built this a end version of the world tree floating out here in the middle of the void which i love so very much all of 20 dragons have been killed to unlock the portals going around here and eventually let me know what you think about this one i'm kind of playing with the idea of building more things around the outer edge of this like more islands and things kind of playing with the idea of a cyberpunk city just because i've seen a few other people do it and it looks really cool and i kind of want to do it but i worry that's going to take away from the grand glowiness of this so i kind of want something out there but i'm not sure what i know for sure i want to do some fancy glass art underneath this because if you turn on the shaders you get this which is gorgeous and I love the way it feels like we're in a nebula in space and I want to recreate that down underneath with like a really cool nebula of like purple glasses lighting them up with glow like it and foggy effects like we get through here just seeing that out at the base would be amazing shaders off though to make sure it's not too laggy inside of here at my wither killing station if I need to from the wither skelly farm the dragon egg was returned just floating above where it originally was and the inside of this is really cool. You can kind of look into the void from this side at all the tendrils going out there doing their own thing. Otherwise, inside of the end, to make sure we're touching on everything here, we've got the Enderman farm over there. And if we fly through this portal, now we can fly off into the end islands where you can see this entire watery covered area that is a wither rose farm that i use a lot for black dye and there is the wither so let's leave them alone <laughs> i do have a squid farm in this world but it's really not the best so i tend to use that guy as it's way quicker back here to world spawn spawning in the little chasm that i said we spawned right there so we're pretty close one day buddy you'll get off the lead one day it's okay yep i know you enjoy your fate now 3239 days survived in this world it took four days in game to get through looking at everything and i'm pretty sure i missed some stuff or just like walked right by him and missed it all so if i missed any of your favorite parts let me know down in the comments below and i'll be sure to upload a second part where we can take a more in-depth look at some of those things if you want to see more regular slower paced world tours be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know that as i enjoy walking through this and i know in the main channel videos things do go by pretty quickly so if we want a more slower pace stuff let me know and we can maybe start doing tours after the main videos would that be a good idea you let me know but with that my friends leave a like on this video if you did enjoy subscribe to flip 2 if you have not already i'm really close to hitting 100,000 subscribers and i'd absolutely love to get there so i really do appreciate the support thank you so very much for that but with that my friends we'll catch you all on the flip side bye